Hello everybody, it's Destiny Matt Haven here today. And, well, what is today? Oh, that's right. IS-7, strong positions. And knowing where to go in Arctic region. I mean, just Arctic region from one point of a spawn and I just slap my desk. Might kind of hurt my knuckle a little bit. But hey, you know, it, it happens. And that kind of hurt. I really freaking slapped it. Well, you know what, let's just... It replays. Yep, Arctic region. It's going to be Arctic region with more Arctic region, and then it's over from one side of a spawn. So, IS-7, you guys are going to be seeing my ammo loadout. I've been going really hard in the IS-7 the past couple of days, and I got to the point where I just wanted to be mean. So I loaded a full premium loadout with a couple of high explosives, and, yeah, I feel a little bit mean. You know, it's it's just, it, it is what it is. So we got 26 APCR premium rounds, four high explosives. And I'm hoping that you guys will learn a couple of things today about strong positioning on our Arctic region. I do want to go over steps, Prokhorovka, Milanovka, Himmelsdorf. There's a couple of maps, really good positions. There's a lot of positions. So... One of these days, I'll probably just take a, a, a coloring grid and just color out spots that are good to hit in certain tanks. You know, we'll go over gun depression, armor, a couple of other things, but that's going to be way down the future. Not not tomorrow, not within a week. That's going to be like a month, maybe two months, because I need to get the equipment first to be able to do that. And it'd be super cool if I could. But right off the bat, the light tank trying to be really aggressive to get side spots on everybody. And here we are just pulling up and saying, no, you do not. <laughs> you are out of the game early today. So, Ar Arctic region, it's a little scary. You know, usually the right flank, it's really hard to push up on the right flank. But I was uh, playing with Yuki, and I kind of just said, screw it, let's go. Let's go see what we can do. If we can do anything. And by chance, I stumbled into a position that I did not know about. And I'm probably going to be using it a lot more in the future. And by the way, it's very slippery. Those rocks, yeah, those are uh, extremely slippery. So, APCR straight through the front of the mouse along with that Panzer 7 T1105 off to the far left. We're just going to be slowly uh, trying to throttle it forward on smooth rocks and back up on smooth rocks. I noticed that if you kind of push yourself a little bit to the left, you get some traction from the uh, mud and the dirt off to the left rather than just sitting on the rock. But within the first two minutes of the match, we're already up to 2,333 damage, 2,239 blocked. Uh, no assist yet, but we will be getting a little bit of assist, but it takes a second. But honestly, strong position. This was... I was not expecting to see this, and now that I, I did find it, and I wanted to share it with you guys because I didn't realize how strong this was. And the way that the IS-7 is put together... The turret virtually has no weak spots at all. It, it takes a Jagdpanzer E100 or maybe even 395 heat pin just to be able to go through that turret. So the turret, super strong turret on IS-7. If you guys got it, honestly, I'm surprised I haven't been seeing players completely steamroll me inside their IS-7s because of how strong IS-7s can be. But being able to get hauled down and take those positions, it just takes some time. So, one minute has gone by. We've already gone up by 2,000 more damage. And we're not done yet. We're still full health. Uh, 619 spot assist, 4,000 ricochet, and now we're just going to start driving in to say hello to the 430. That puts a heat round straight through our front. Paying attention to the mouse up on the left side, wondering if I should focus him out or not. He already fired, so we can now put our attention back to the 430U, taking out the driver. We need to get the driver back in. Slamming on reverse, because we're not going to let him hug our sides for a long period of time. And he is able to get another shell into us. But, not without us outplaying him just a tad bit, because he panicked. And it was also 2-1-1. And taking him down for the count. Up to 5,077 damage dealt so far. This honestly was a really quick roll up on the right side and they had two artilleries on their team and their artilleries just they they weren't paying attention at all like if if artillery would have looked down 
around J6 that we were located, we, we probably would have been dead. We would have got knocked out extremely early. But pulling up to go say hello to an FE4005, a Conqueror, and another Death Star, the 183. So, ooh, look, clicker. You shoot the clickers. Never let them live. They all die. Take them out as fast as you can. Yeah, artillery, the bane of everyone's existence. And Yuki taking 1,182. Along with that, we have a Conqueror that we're going to be pulling up. Yeah, we get a little bit of gun depression, but we got it. And from the look right there, it doesn't look like that Conqueror is fully upgraded. He doesn't have the big boy gun on it, so I'm, I'm so sorry that you're playing during plus one, minus one with a stock tank and getting a really good snapshot into the Death Star. And he went through our lower plate, the left side armor. I have absolutely no clue where he just went through right there. 183, finishing off the Death Star. And pulling up, getting ready to try and get a top shot, but with two seconds left on the reload, we were not able to. So pulling up around the corner, putting in another shell into the Conqueror, taking him down. Jumping our spot assist up to 1,172. 4,000 blocked. That did not change after we rushed the 430U. After the 430U, I think our RNG just went out the window because everything went through. So, but hope you guys learned something on Arctic Region today because... This is something... Oh, yeah, UFOs, April Fools. I don't know about you guys, but the April Fools jokes, it's kind of funny. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'm not going to lie. I'm enjoying it. Just the little things that's popping up inside the matchmaking, I, I think it's really cool. Just small... Little, we're going to reuse this IS-7 replay later in the future, because that was pretty cool. Along with that, we got a mastery badge. We maintain our three mark. We got a high caliber still wall. Uh, duelist. I don't think we had a duelist there. I think we did. I have no clue. Oh, well, it's it's gone now. It's gone. It went bye-bye. It's out the window. Next step. <laughs> Arctic region. I don't know about you guys, but I've had a really good day today. And I just feel like a goofball. So, yeah, there's that, you know. Ooh, do, do, do. So, enemy team. We got a T-92 HMC. Two Yag Panzers. I do not like seeing two Yag Panzers at all. Every single time I play the IS-7 and I see a Jagdpanzer, I think to myself, my face is going to hurt a crap ton. And usually it does. So, yeah, that's that's always the best. Always the best. And getting everything ready up off to the side here. This was kind of quick. I, I did not really spend too much time getting uh, most of this hooked up. So, with the IS-7... With the 130 millimeter that it has and the 490 alpha, the 10 second reload you can get it down to with a fully buffed up crew, a gun rammer, ventilation, and rations, which is food, so the premium consumable. It's honestly really, really good beast. It's just extremely hard to take down. Now, the IS-7, you know, it, it's been around for a long time inside the game. It's not a bad tank at all. Dude, this tank is... Honestly... The IS-7 has got to be one of those all-round tanks that, in the right hands, can be one of the strongest tanks in the game. Then again, every single tank in the game can be the strongest tank in the game in the right hands. So, it's kind of hard to go over that. But it is what it is. And I am monologuing quite a bit. Okay, so that looks good. I'm, I'm happy with that. That, that. that looks good. Cool. So this position here in Arctic region. So we had a lot of the team pushing up on the right side. This is the alternate spawn for Arctic region as well for the bottom spawn. And up in this top position, depending on your turret armor, depending on your hull armor, um, this little bit of a corner work line, you can really get in. Strong enough turret, you can pop out, take quick pop shots, fall back. You see a lot of people use this position quite a bit and it works out pretty well for them or they get sniped off from the back by c1 and d1 but there wasn't many people back there this round now looking at the map we have a lot of tanks up on the right side uh, a couple heavies up there as well on the enemy side we have two mediums out in the middle that are just basically spotting out one another yeah uh, up to 892 block 1785 dealt so far it's only been the first two minutes of the match so this is still going pretty good. It's, you know, just pulling up, 
taking the time to get those shots in and then backing off as quick as we can because we do not want to sit out in the front of the guns of the Yagaroos because those things hurt and 50 TP being nice enough to give us the lower plate of his tank to give us a little bit more damage off of him. FV4202, tier 10 British medium. I would really like to start grinding out those tanks, but I've been slacking off a little bit. So taking a little bit of damage, but making sure to put at least a 400 roll into the Yagaru because we want to try and get the health in those guys down as far as we can because they're going to be the biggest threats. So take the biggest threat and punish it as much as you can. Let them know they have a long reload and let them know you're firing nothing but premium because you feel like being the nicest guy in the world. I do have a premium account and I do make quite a bit of silver every single match that I play. So usually I'm not too worried about, you know, occasionally outfitting a tank with a full premium loadout just to be an absolute nuisance. And since it's APCR and not heat rounds, it's not as bad. You don't have to load any standards because you don't got to worry about overmatching because APCR can overmatch. Uh, heat rounds cannot overmatch, so whenever I do do this inside of a heat round tank, I like to take a couple of standard rounds so I can actually do overmatching if I have any opportunities to do so. But everything is going good. Yeah, football today. Super good day. Oh, and taking a shot from the Yagaru because I pulled out a little bit too far, risked it just a tad bit, and I did not, I wasn't able to get a shot into the Yagaru even though I risked it. So that's a little bit sad. But what happened was we are getting up in the ricochets. We are able to come out and we bounce off of the Yagaru. So and we've both been hit hard. Now, the instant um, aim rate there that I just did, I, I've been uh, screwing around a little bit, trying to get better with my reaction times inside the matches. So my situational awareness is a little bit better. Um, looking over to your left, locking your turret and just looking around in general being able to quickly use your aiming stick so like you know just click in your trigger to aim in real fast allows you to relocate where your camera angle is at with the regular remote even though you're not using mouse and keyboard it, it's just a quicker al alternative way of uh, looking around it's just something that could probably help you out in the future it it's a small thing but it's it helps i mean every single small thing helps out a lot um, that shot, I kind of wish I would have put that in the lower plate of the Yagaru to save a little bit of the uh, rounds that we have left. It, it, it does get uncomfortable inside the IS-7 with the 30 rounds you have because you can get 6 rounds off a minute and within, you know, 6 or so minutes of consistent fighting you can be down to just a couple of rounds left and it can be extremely uncomfortable. So putting another round into his tracks. I have no clue if he's carrying two repair kits or not because that repair time was intense. So look it up at the scoreboard here. We're seven to eight and I remember that there was a couple of guys off in the distance that I do not want to pull out against. There's no point to get aggressive. We were getting detected and right there we're spotted. So rather than pushing up, I'm just trying to bait shots from the distance. Use my turret armor to my advantage. I know that this position was strong, that nothing was getting through my turret, so the goal is just to peek over real quick and then back off, trying to get them to bait a shot. Make them feel like they can take a shot. Because I have no clue what's down there, so I don't want to risk pulling out there. And looking at the map, I feel like it'd be nice if I can reinforce the right side or help with the medium tank and the heavy tank that just came up behind me. But if I fall back from this flank, I'm a little bit afraid that it would be pushed on and I would get flanked, hoping that the heavy tank down at the uh, middle there would be able to hold out. But quickly, our numbers start to drop dramatically. And I remember looking over at the scoreboard there and I, I laughed because the Conqueror actually drove off into the water at H5. I actually went through the replay. So the Conqueror that was behind us, he kind of slid down the hill. It, it was a little funny to watch. I, I did go back through because this was a really good match. And I checked out a couple of things. And I sent a lot of people GG's and good games. And it was nice to have them there. Like that 60 TP that was on my team, he definitely deserved a GG. He had an extremely good match. 
and it was nice to have him on the team. And if you ever catch this video and you know who you are, let me know. Because I didn't check your name. I, I checked the uh, CS and a couple other guys that were on the list. And the match has been out now for about three days since I recorded it. And now, if you know who you are, shoot me a message. It'd be nice to catch you. And right there, a little bit of lag. Um, I actually reconnected my headset. And whenever I reconnect my headset, my game likes to jump around a little bit. So I'm sorry you guys had to see that. And quick snap into the standard B of one hit point left. And he did take a little bit of our hit points down to 523. So now it's just a little uncomfortable because I, we can still take two shots from the concept 1B. So I, I still feel a little bit safe, but it would have been nice to have that extra 300 hit points, 200 hit points that was taken off from the 880 that we had prior. So it does kind of suck a little bit. Now... Arctic region has been around for a long time and there's a lot of strong positions on this map that you can get to to really put in the work but from the bottom spawn on both sides if you guys ever end up on those spawns and let's say you're inside of a tank that's only got five degrees of gun depression even tanks with 10 degrees of gun depression inside the positions I just showed off could be extremely useful and probably do really good overall so Relying on the IS-7's armor to, you know, get in and face hug as much as we can. Now, pulling up, taking out the concept now. Waiting to get that shot lined up on the hatch up in the front. There's a full health QL pushing us right now. And right here, I'm trying to back up as much as I can. And instantly, you guys saw that turret just get RB auto-locked and a heat shell fly out of the QL. So I can't say too much about the heat rounds that he's firing because I did have a full premium loadout on the IS-7. Along with that, the CS-59 that's on our team, I was kind of hoping that I would be able to hold down a little bit and allow him to get his DPM out on the side of the QL and on the side of the E-50 because it was down to a 2 versus 2, but I wasn't able to because I, had, I risked a lot of my hit points holding one side of the flank and it, it, it worked it worked quite a bit and e50 coming up alrighty this however was still a good game even though it was a defeat we still did 6849 with 4000 blocked a little bit of assist damage but it is what it is I do not mind the defeat because it was still a good match now, usually I don't like showing off matches like this where it's crazy amounts of damage, multiple ace tankers in a row, but the IS-7 is one of those tanks that I get extremely comfortable inside and I feel like I can just rock the absolute world inside this tank. So, speaking of which, you know, IS-7, it's a tier 10. Doing a review on a, a tier 10 is something that I try to avoid, but I've been doing a couple of them as a recent, so we might do one on the IS-7. I find the IS-7 to be an absolute monster, haul down, bad A. You know, you just get in, it's got really good top speed. I mean, look at the armor on this. This is up against T-57 Heavy, so lo even loading the heat rounds, if the IS-7 is maxing out its gun depression of six degrees which i i don't think it's got six degrees in console. it might have six degrees in console i have to double check but still 27 percent chance to pin with 340 heat pin i find the is7 to just be an absolute monster of a tank you know it's got a pike nose so you can easily come around a corner and bait shots in that lower plate and it's a thick lower plate 150 millimeters of armor it's it's not a joking around plate but Jumping back into what we can get. Those positions on Arctic region can be extremely beneficial. The one at the bottom right, I have pushed to it a couple of times, but with the new HD textures that they put inside the map, they changed how that area works a little bit. So if you're inside of a haul down tank, take the positions I showed. Go give it a try. Have some fun and just know it was nice having you here. I feel like being a goofball today because I've been a goofball today. I've been screwing around and it, it's been fun. So until next time, if you guys liked the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe. Seriously, leave a comment. I'm going to try my best to get into those. I, I know I've been slacking off and I say that on a ton of videos, but I try. 
If not, if you guys want to try and get in contact with me, hit me up over on Discord. I will, uh, I, I, I there, ugh, there should be a link in the description. I'm going to have to really screw around and learn how to do that a lot better than what I have been doing. So, until next time, I'll catch you guys on the battlefield. Uh, if I'm in the IS-7, just know I'm not holding back.